Hi, this is Coach Joe Lucas, and welcome to the Magellan Network Show. My goal inside of this communication, this show, is to share with you my nearly 30 years of coaching some of the most successful financial advisors in North America. We're going to be talking about strategies, syntaxes, we're going to bring guests on from time to time, and I'm going to share with you what's working now. So think of this show as sort of like a little one-on-one kind of mini coaching cast, if you like, where we're going to be going in depth from time to time on strategies to help you grow your business, get more effective, become more efficient, find balance in your time management, grow your business, and quite frankly, whatever else is going on in the world today. So before we get to today's episode, I'd love for you to do a couple things for me. Number one, make sure that if you're watching this on YouTube, that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're doing the audio, make sure that you give us a review on whether Spotify or Apple, you know, we'd really appreciate that. And quite frankly, that does help. It does matter when you rate things and like things and subscribe to things, it helps us get the word out to more of the industry. And lastly, I have a very special gift for you go to MagellanNetwork.net, so one word, MagellanNetwork.net, and I have for you a complimentary membership, 100% gratis, where you can tap into about between 50 and 75 hours of master classes, forms, tools, templates, and strategies. So please go ahead and uh, make sure you go ahead and get that claim, smash the like button and subscribe, And uh, please go ahead and leave us a review on whatever podcasting platform you're on. And now, let's get to this week's episode. Hey, welcome to this episode of the Magellan Network Show. What we're going to do for the next several episodes is like a little bit of a mini series. So I want you to consider like a like a master class in essence. And uh, the subject matter, the topic for the next, so let's say, four weeks or so is going to be understanding optimization and how that applies to financial advisors and financial advisory practices. Now, in my nearly 30-year career of coaching and consulting advisors, you know, I've, I've worked with, looked at, had conversation with over 2,500 different practices. And there's not been one situation in those 2,500 plus that we've not found at least three to five areas, three to five items, which they can deploy optimization to increase profitability, increase yield, increase assets under management, increase productivity, and so on. So what we're gonna do in today's episode is talk about, well, what is optimization? What are the principles of of optimization? And then we're going to talk about what we call the four domains of optimization. So let's kind of jump into a little bit of background and what optimization is. So in my, uh, I've been very blessed in my 30-year career, almost 30-year career, of meeting a lot of very bright people in and out of our industry. One of those people, I like to consider him an early mentor of mine, uh, Mr. Jay Abraham. You can go Google Jay Abraham. And uh, Jay is just really, he's not a marketing consultant. I wouldn't call him a practice management consultant or an HR or anything like that. He's really just, he understands how to optimize businesses, uh, all businesses. So if you look at his background, he's done well over a thousand different industries. So this has got nothing to do with advisory land. However, I'm always able to look at something and adapt or retrofit it into how it applies in our space here, which is what I'm going to do in this masterclass. In July, I spent three days with him in a quasi mastermind training, I think they call it experience. And um, it was, for me, I had a lot of breakthrough thinking. It was transformational in a lot of ways to me, how I view things, how I view my own opportunities, how I'm teaching my clients how to view their opportunities, and so on. So really what optimization is, is what we call highest and best outcome, highest and best use, highest and best return on investment. And that investment is not just capital in terms of hard dollars, it's in terms of best and highest use of our time, our energy, our focus, our people, right? 
all those things. So when you start looking at your business, and again, I don't care if you're a solopreneur slash lifestyle practice, you're a ensemble practice, or you're an empire builder. I mean, I work with all, you know, I've got clients in all those domains. Wirehouse, independent, RA, doesn't matter. Financial planning, subscription-based planning, you know, doesn't matter. This applies to all of us. So what we're going to do when we think about when we think about optimization, I've broken it down into what I call four domains. Here are the four. Number one, how do you optimize yourself? Now, why is that important? Because at the end of the day, you're the heartbeat of your business. Whether you're solopreneur, ensemble, empire, you're the heartbeat of the business. So your business goes as you go. I've always said this. Every business in our space is a direct reflection of the founder slash leader, period. Founder leader, functional, good mindset, positive. There's going to be a certain, uh, certain vibe to that business, right? Dysfunctional, there's a certain vibe to that business, right? So we're going to talk about self. That matters. You can't, what a, a massive mistake I, I've seen in my career with advisors, they talk in what they call a third party. Now, what does that mean? Oh man, I gotta get the business to do this, or I gotta get my people, or I gotta get this, or I gotta get my clients to give me more referrals, or I got like no, no, no. It's all you're abdicating your responsibility. What it really boils down to, you gotta look in the mirror and ask ask yourself, Am I is this the best version of me? I know the answer. If I do it even today, is the answer is no. There's always another version. Where do you go find that? So we're gonna talk a little about so we're gonna spend probably a little bit of this episode talking about self. Next one, team. The people that you that are on your team, right? And that comes in a couple different, what I call concentric circles. Your W2 team, and then your 1099 team. Like uh, for, for all my clients, I'm in the 1099 world, right? I'm not on the team directly, but I am a very big part of the unit, okay? We'll talk about it. How to optimize your team. That'll be next conversation. Third, clients. How do you optimize your clients? I've got some very specific strategies how to deploy different concepts to go ahead and maximize uh, not just the economic value. I mean, that's one measurement, of course, but how to leverage your clients. And fourth, branding, marketing, business development, BMB. How do we optimize branding? How do we optimize marketing? How do we optimize business development? And this is a psychology. So let me be very clear. This is a mindset. Okay. This is about you looking at a situation and saying, where are my opportunities today? When you're sitting down and you're looking at your team, how do I make them better? When you're looking at yourself, how do I make myself better? Where are the opportunities in my client base, my book of business? Where are my opportunities with my website, uh, with my digital marketing, with my messaging? Where are my opportunities with my COIs, referral strategies, networking, all those things? It's a psychology. It's a, it's a way of looking at things. What I found, and this is, hopefully you'll find this, again, this hopefully you, for many of you, you'll find this series very profound, is a lot of advisors will go and say, I want to grow. Well, so how are we going to do that? Well, I need to get more people, more money, right? I mean, that's kind of the way it works, right? We get new clients. I got to get new money or whatever it's premium, whatever. It doesn't really matter. And so the common thinking here is we get very, what I call externally focused. I got to go get new. I got to go make things happen. I got to go, I got to go get more household. And then, but when I look at a business, like I said, I've been doing this for almost 30 years, I'll ask these questions. Do all your clients have financial plans? Do we have balance sheets? You know, what, what do we know about their CPA and attorney relationships? Uh, what do we know about the beneficiaries? What about the next gen children, adult children, things like that? I mean, I can rattle off 15, 20 things just on clients, right? And here's the beauty about, about what I call running an optimization protocol in your business. Typically, it's one of the lowest cost or lowest investments, use that term, better term, lowest investment highest yield process, right? People will spend tens of thousands of dollars, even hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing, seminars, radio, internet, Facebook ads, direct mail, solicitors, all the above. And what they're doing is they're bringing new into an unoptimized process. Now you'll still be profitable. You'll still make some money. I'm not saying you won't, 
But man, you knock this out, you kind of get religion on this thing. It can be transformative for you also. Okay? So let's kind of delve into, uh, for this episode, a little bit about, you know, why this is so important. Hi, Coach Joe Lucas here, and I'm just breaking here for a moment just to do a couple quick reminders. Number one, uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel or our podcast. In addition, please leave a, a comment or a review. Those things really, really matter. And uh, share this episode with three of your colleagues inside the financial services space. And lastly, make sure that you go ahead and claim your free membership inside of Magellan Network. Now back to this week's episode. Now the reality is in my world, and I'm always curious and I've done, I haven't done this in a while, but I used to do this a lot. Hey, tell me about your profit. How do you determine profitability? What's your profit margin? What's it cost you to have a household? You know, how much more do you need? What's your top line? What's the lifetime value of a client? And I'll, I'll pepper people with uh, advisors with these questions. They're like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, right? And so it's interesting how this industry will teach you how to be an advisor, but they really don't teach you how to be a business owner. They don't teach you how to be an entrepreneur. They don't talk about profits. Oh, I charge one percent, one and a quarter percent, one and a half percent, seven by base points, fifty base points. I always say, well, how'd you come up with that? Well, that's what everybody does. Is it? And then I'll ask the next person, well, how'd you go? Well, that's what everybody does. Like, in other words, I totally believe that our pricing model is not, I'm not going to say fabricated, but it's not based on anything other than what everybody else seems to do. So somewhere 20, 30 years ago, somebody said, one person, that sounds good. Let's just go with that one. That, they could have picked that out of a hat. Who knows, right? And yet the industry accepts it. What would happen if you didn't accept it? What would happen if you say, hey, what's it cost us to have a client every year? There's hard costs and then we'll call. So how do you figure costs? It's simple math. And it, look, this is a swag. I'll admit it. But it's better than what most people do, which is nothing. What's the cost you to run your business? How many households you have? Divide out. That's kind of a baseline, right? That's hard cost. Then you get into what I call, there's also the liability, right? Liability. That's code for Anybody can sue you anytime. All your clients can sue you, right? So how do you bake that in? You got to factor that in, right? Uh, all these things. What's your time worth? You go draw a salary and what's your profit? You know, we talk about profits. To me, there are three elements of a dollar that's generated. Number one, acquisition. How do I acquire the client? You know, you know, am I paying somebody? Was there a marketing function? What's it cost me? Number two, like we call overhead and service. Do I have a servicing advisor? What's it going to cost me part of the team? And then profits. Profits. You as a business owner, I know this is going to be shocking, some of you, you're allowed to make a profit, which then gets distributed to your bottom line. Okay? So acquisition, what's it going to cost us to service the client, take care of them, right? Overhead, servicing advisor, meeting, so on and so forth. Profit. How much, how much, how much? Out of a dollar, Right? Well, you know, you're saying, well, Joe, what's the number? What's it look like? It is so individualistic because there's not one practice model. If you're doing seminars, your acquisition cost is going to be a lot higher year one, right? Versus if you're working on referrals for the most part, you're going to have a much lower acquisition cost, right? Are you the advisor that's going to be taking care of the client? Well, you're going to have more margin there, not as much leverage, right? Or do I have a team that they're going to go with? So I'll take, I'll take less profit, but I can scale that, right? Then what's on top? Most advisors don't get these concepts because you're an advisor, and I understand that. But these are some things you have to do. Next question, what is the lifetime value of a client? For those, so some of you have come to our business planning conference, which we now call Magellan Vision. You know, what's a typical client with you? And I'm going to do very simple math, all right? So just hold with me, and, and we're going to get to the optimization stuff probably next episode because this is, this is really, in my mind, sets the stage for the next several weeks. Let's just say you have a client with a million dollars, AUM, 1%. Keep the math simple, right? So I've got $10,000 of top line revenue. How long do you expect that client to be with you? Five years? Three years? One year? 10 years? 15 years? 20 years? I'm going to say if, there, if you're doing retirement rollover business, let's just go with 20 years. It could be 20, 30, but 20 is fair, right? Now, market's going to go up, market's going to go down, RMDs, money in. Let's just not get crazy. Simple concept. 
$10,000 a year times 20 years is $200,000. Lifetime value. We're not counting referrals we're going to get. Uh, just simple conversation. Okay. Next question. So I've got lifetime value of typical client, $200,000. What are you willing to invest in getting that client? What do you want to invest? If you know that every time I acquire a million dollar client, I'm basically accruing $200,000 at minimum top line rev. What do you want to invest to get $200,000? So if I said to you, hey, for you to get a million dollar client and $200,000 a year, what do you want to invest? Let's say I want to invest $2,000, right? 1%, 4%, 2%, whatever, right? You need to have a number. Hey, what am I willing to do? Now, does that mean you have to absolutely invest that money every time to get a, a million dollar client? No, but you got to know what you're willing to do. Why? It helps you with your marketing budget. budget. It helps you with your business development budget, right? It's critically important. Most advisors, and I've seen this in my career, will do some marketing. Oh, Joe, it didn't work. I said, well, let's look at the P&L, right? Well, I only got two clients. I did I did, I did a seminar. It cost me $10,000, and I only got two clients out of it. I said, okay, well, let's look at it. Well, hey, we brought in a million dollars of AUM, $10,000 of top line. We're going to be break even or slightly unprofitable year one. Uh, that sucks. It does unless you know lifetime value. See, if you know lifetime value, so they go, okay. So in your thinking, when you're building out your business model and your goal, say, look, we're going to acquire a client. We're, you know, typical client, we're not profitable year one. But we're going to drive optimization. We're going to drive referrals and introductions. We're going to get to know their CPA and attorney. We're going to get to know their beneficiaries. We're going to get to know their children, whatever, right? And all of a sudden, this $10,000 client, because of the other thing to be deployed, is now worth twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year to us. Now, how much would you willing to invest to get that client? See, advisors don't think that way. And it's not, it's not because you're not intelligent or you're not smart. It's not about that. You just haven't looked at it this way. This is about giving you a different set of glasses to look at your business. I don't care if you're one year in the business. Somebody says, well, Joe, that's great, man. But I'm a startup. Yeah, I just got in this business. I said, look, working optimize. You have your warm market. You have your LinkedIn people. You have your Facebook friends, you have your Twitter connections, you have your Instagram buddies. I mean, there are plenty of places, and yes, you're going to fail massively. You know, when I talk to my tribe inside of Magellan Network every morning, which is what I do, you know, we always talk about, hey, what is the, what's the game here? And what the game really is, is it's failure-based. You know, we play follow-up Friday game. And what does that mean? Follow Friday means we go out, we, we have a game that all of our members play where we go out and we, we do business development on Friday, right? Prospects, COIs, you know, all that. And I always say, look, if your goal is to connect with 10 people today, you're going to get nine of them are not going to, you're not going to get a result out of nine of them at least, right? But the 10th one be worth it. Do it 20 times, you'll do it, get two, right? Do it 100 times, you get 10. A lot of advisors have a problem with that. Because they don't focus on the one, they focus on the nine they didn't get, or the oh I got ghosted, man, or I only got one, re I only got one response out of ten messages I sent. So go ten percent, do that a thousand times, you'll have a hundred, right? We got to think differently in this industry. Um, it's great to be professional, it's wonderful and highly educated and so on, but look. There's got to be a business development and optimization monster underneath all those clothing. Like this has got to be like your alter ego. This will make you so much money and so much profitability. And it's not a silver bullet. So let me be clear. I don't do silver bullets. A lot of people do. I don't do these. This is hard work. This is over long periods of time. This is not a sugar fix. It doesn't work that way. But it can be transformative if you embrace this psychology. That's what we're offering. That's what I'm offering you inside this masterclass over the next several weeks. So here's what I'd like you to do. We were going to do part one. We didn't get to it. This is the way I operate. I got kind of ADD and I get on things and and I, I whatever comes in my brain, I want to get out to you guys, especially if I think it's valuable. And just so you know, there's always multiple things going on inside here. And some of I say, nope, that's not good enough. Let's talk about this. If you embrace this philosophy, and I'm going to give you over the next several weeks, tangible, actual, I will not be concept. Today's concept. 
Next, we get into tangibles, action. It will add to your bottom line, I guarantee it. All right, so that's what I have for you this week. Thank you for watching or listening this episode of Magellan Nature. Sorry we didn't get to what we need today. We're going to get to it next week. We're going to start with the self. So, so next episode, I'm going to spend time talking about how you can op- optimize you. So thanks for listening and watching. See you all next episode. Thank you for watching or listening to this episode of the Magellan Network Show. Hey, if any of this resonated with you, I invite you to come to MagellanNetwork.net and we have a powerful group coaching community of like-minded advisors. Come in for a trial. You and I will have a one-on-one conversation. Let's see if I can help elevate your game both personally and professionally.